Okay. Um, let's just, uh, I don't want to get too far in the weeds on this, but I did want to uh, alert everybody because the decision that occurred uh, when the chloride um, option alternate was taken also included what the projected costs were going to be out throughout the, e the end of 2037. So the sanitation district met on October the 28th in uh, City Hall uh, to uh, 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 the surprise of a lot of people there. Alternate four, which was the water blending plan, uh, was no longer being supported by the downstream users. And so uh, they selected alternate two, which was the uh, backup plan submitted by the uh, staff. And what it includes is it includes uh, the uh, change from chlorine to UV disinfection, uh, chloride removal using reverse osmosis, and uh, reverse osmosis and the re elimination of chloride produces brine, and brine disposal using deep well injection. Total capital cost, as stated in the information that was uh, circulated with EIR, was for this project was $130 million in 2012 dollar representation. And that's important because it's not going to get built in 2012. Never was planned to be built in 2012. So um, we're, we're, we're going to get to spend a chunk of change. Uh, it's more like in 2017 dollars uh, they're claiming now $142 million. But we're going we're gonna to get to spend that money. And what are we going to get for it? Absolutely nothing. And what are the downstream users going to get? They're going to get the same. So this is a, really a tragedy uh, in government occurring. Well, some, uh, I had some people ask me, they said, how could you go and, and uh, to that uh, 28th meeting, October 28th meeting, and support alternate two. And so I just thought I'd, I'd want to make my position really clear that when we went to the meeting on October the 28th, we only had two choices. I kind of viewed it like going to a restaurant and opening the menu and not finding what I wanted to eat on it, right? But knowing that if I didn't want to leave hungry, I had to order something that was on that menu. And there were only two things on the menu, option four and option two. So at the time, we were supporting alternate two because we thought it was the lesser of two evils. Uh, one thing that it didn't do was it didn't require us to negotiate the solution with the downstream users. We keep hearing people talk about, we want to maintain local control. Well, you're not going to get local control if you select uh, solutions that require you to go negotiate it with someone that may not be, have the same interests as you do. Um, it doesn't give away any of our water resources. We're in the exact same position we are today. It doesn't create any new habitats, which would require us to continually to dump more water into the river. And in fact, use of uh, reverse osmosis could be discontinued at some point, providing that the, uh, the resulting water coming out of our water treatment plant had less than 100 milligrams per liter of salt in it because that's the requirement. So the other thing that I think I wanted to make really clear is when I went to support alternate two, I didn't think it was over. At the end of my statement, I requested that the district use the three years that it's going to take to plan the facility and obtain all the permits that they need to get to challenge the Regional Water Board's requirement for us to meet the 100 milligram per liter limit administratively. And there are administrative methods that you can use to submit new information legally. Uh, of course, you know, that says that you're going to use um, uh, the, uh, the legal system and lawsuits and legislatively to see if we can get our state legislators to somehow give us some relief. Do I think they're going to do that? No. I mean, they've had the ability to do those three things since 2005, and they haven't done it. I doubt seriously whether they're going to do it now, but it's something that we've got to keep bugging them about and keep pushing 
that we want a solution. So the question that we have tonight is, what is this going to cost? And like uh, I, uh, I showed you, that thing on the screen is this. But uh, this one's a little bigger, and I, I picked sections of this off. Now, why do, I, why do I have to go and do this? And the reason why I had to go and do this is because I kept asking them what it was going to cost, and they kept telling me things like, well, for this amount of time, we're going to do this, and for this amount of time, we're going to do that. And so I started putting it into spreadsheets and looking at the numbers and, and uh, reporting on them. And then they watched it on, uh, they watched it on YouTube, and they called me and say, no, nope, that's the wrong numbers. All right? So I finally turned around and said to them, look, just give me your spreadsheets. Let me have your spreadsheet, then there won't be any question. I'll report exactly what you say. Okay? And they said, oh, we can't do that. <laughs> They're not approved for release yet. Oh. So at the last meeting, last meeting I went with them and, um, and showed uh, the, the uh, gentleman my spreadsheet, and uh, he looked at it, and he said, well, you need to start this at this point, you need to do this at that point. And I said, okay. And then when we did that, our numbers come out pretty close. So we have a very good idea. We know what they're going to do when they go back to the public in May of next year when um, they, they're going to come to us and say, uh, we need more money. This is, what we, this is what your rates are going to be so we can show you what they're going to look like. So the first set of rate increases occur through 2014 to 2019. They said this uh, in the open meetings, but, but it was curious as to why that was going to occur. And, and the one thing that I always love about this, and they hate about, they hate when I say this, when I say, you know, since the, uh, since the sanitation district has been the Santa Clarita Sanitation District, you have increased the price uh, to the rate payers at a, an average rate of 11% per year. And, you know, they go, oh, God, you hurt. That hurts, right? And he said, well, they, we don't like when you say that. And I said, but it's true. And they go, well, but it's not our fault. And I go, I don't care. It's what I'm going to write my check about. So they told us three years ago, if you remember, that if they increased the rates to 10% a year, that after that three years, then it would come down and it would, it would be much lower after that. Well, now what they're saying is, basically, if you increase the rates at this rate, and this rate has nothing to do with the percentage, and you um, give me a rate for one, two, three, four, five, six years, uh, I'll be around 10% a year for five years at an average, and then I'll go way down again. And so uh, I, I believe that as much as I believed it the last time I heard it. But this is, this, this, this is based on some assumptions, and I'll explain to you why they did it the way they did it. You see, they're going to be collecting money from 2014 to 2017 that they don't need. But what they're going to do is they're going to accumulate it so that in 2017, when they start construction, they're going to have $26.5 million. They said 30, so that that will reduce the amount that they have to borrow and will prevent the number from being a larger step function at some time in the future. So that's why um, they, they, they came up with this, this, particular, this particular rate structure. And then in 2017, since they borrowed the money, then it will start the payback process of paying back the, uh, uh, the, uh, the loan. Now, another assumption that they made is how many new people would be added to the system over time because the more new people that are added to the system, the more money they collect because they have more users. Now, I can already say that I think their projection is a little off because they're saying that, no, through 2018, they're expecting to see 30 sanitation units increase each year because the economy, and the economy is going to shoot back up, and they're going to get 300 a year. All right, and uh, 300 a year for 20 years is about 6,000 users. But uh, I have a feeling in the first year they're going to get a little more because Via Metro is coming online. 
and uh, there's a lot more than 30 units there. There's probably 300. So we're going we're gonna to see what happens. They're also going to make the assumption that all money inflates at the rate of 3% a year, no matter what kind of money it is, whether it's borrowed money, whether it is the cost of anything, it's going to inflate at 3% a year. Now, that's an interesting uh, assumption, but everything that I've heard from power users and power companies is to expect an inflation rate for power at 6% a year. So these numbers are probably low. But for the first, uh, first set of years, we're going to, um, to go from uh, 2013, 2019. Uh, those are the numbers. And that $410 number in, in 2019 was in the EIR, if you remember looking at it. And then um, they gave me the rest of these fill-in numbers uh, when they uh, were telling me uh, that I could make up my own spreadsheet. Then what's going to happen is uh, we're going to have to start using the plant. So in order to use the plant, what happens is, is that the, the recurring cost for using the plant is four, about $4.5 million a year. That's how much they expect that it's going to cost, in addition to what they're doing today, to run the reverse osmosis and UV disinfection and uh, fill those wells. And... Um, they are, are then saying, what we're going to do is we're going to increase this at $4 a year, and, which is, you know, around 1%. And so we'll go from $414 in 2020 to $482 in 2037, when they'll be almost paid off. Actually, they will have uh, their total cost for their entire project, what's existing today, um, what it costs to build, what it costs to borrow the money, um, what it costs to run it uh, over that period of time is uh, $1 billion, $1.05 billion. And they will collect the total revenue based on the assumptions that they had. They will collect $1.04 billion, being about $13 million short and be about one year away from, from breaking even. So now all of these things, of course, have some really interesting and flawed assumptions. And one of the assumptions is that there's going to be no major um, uh, ma maintenance activity needed. Like there's no money in this in case, let's say, one of the wells fail in, uh, in halfway through and you have to drill new wells or um, um, anything uh, other than, and that's uh, anything other than, and, and, and also, that's what I was trying to think of, and also this is counting on very low finance rate, 2.8%. 2.8% revolving state financing so that the borrowing of $115 million is going to cost $47 million instead of uh, about $115 million. So these are very optimistic numbers. And why, do, why would I, as, as a, an optimistic person that I am, want to think that those numbers might be low? Every year, the Sanitation District publishes its budget. This is the one they published this year, which I, I put a few notes on. And this is the one they published last year. So what you actually do is you have actual numbers for three years, budgeted numbers for this year. And what it turns out is that from the rate you're paying today, this year, the $247 rate, which is on your tax bill now if you're a single-family home, um, they're going to collect $22.8 million. Numbers comes right off their sheet. Okay, and, and it actually works out that way if you multiply the number of sewage units times 247. There's 92,432 of them little devils. And it costs to operate their plant today it costs $21.5 million. But they're spending $35.8 million. Where does that money come from? Okay. And so what it, you look down here and it tells you. Transfer from the capital improvement fund. We're not building any capital projects right now. We're doing maintenance. 
We're doing wear out replacement, but we're not doing it because they told us the capital improvement program fund was strictly to fund new users and increase capacity. Um, they show this year $736,000 that they borrowed, who knows where. And um, um, last year, they borrowed $5,365,000 from the Rate Stabilization Fund. So all in all, using the numbers that come off of their sheets, okay, for the last three years, they've spent $35 million, $35.7 million more than they've taken in. Now, who do you think is going to end up paying that? Okay. So what I think we got to do is we got to watch closely. You got to pay attention to your property tax bill because what's going to happen is we're going to go see that property tax bill go up. It, it, we don't want it to, to see it go up more than it, than, than it should. And uh, hopefully when they go and talk about rate increases, and I'm betting they're going to talk about six, six, at least six years at a crack um, within, within this next uh, May, that they do that right out here in Santa Clarita, that they don't wait and do that in um, uh, Whittier, right out in front of the public. Um, all those kind of meetings take place mid-year, and they did two years ago, three, uh, three years ago, four years ago. They always, always take place just, just before or just after uh, these things come out in April. Now, also, they'll be talking about connection fees, and where you might not think connection fees are important immediately because you don't pay them because you're already connected, it, it drives the cost of doing business. Now, I finally was told the actual method that they use to determine connection fees. And we'll sit there and we'll try to explain that at some later point in time. But it's a very interesting process, and it, it, it makes sense if it's well planned. But when someone just arbitrarily, like um, they did three years ago, and say, well, we think it's too high this year, so we won't make it this high, what happens is it just drives the cost up higher at the end. And uh, uh, it, because you end up having to supply the amount of money for the uh, plant additions. Currently, the, uh, the next plant addition, we right now have a plant that will process 26 and a half million gallons a day. The build out, the build out addition to go to 40 million gallons a day was $186 million. That didn't include RO. So I'm not sure what the price is going to be. And so um, it's very interesting where that money is going to come from. So let's go watch and let's, let's talk about how they, they make a decision of, of how our costs should go up. We need a local visibility. I think you just said it um, about um, uh, having visibility of our processes. And, and I think we need to go back. And, and just because we've made the decision now as to where the thing should be, where the uh, uh, sanitation or what alternative the sanitation facility is going to use, we still need to see those sanitation district meetings right here in Santa Clarita, where we can ask questions of our um, elected officials because uh, it doesn't make any sense. Right now, you go to the, to the city council meeting and you say, you're on the sanitation board, how about answering something for us? And then the lawyer jumps up and says, well, you know, that might cause a conflict of interest so uh, they can't do that. And um, uh, then you, they say, well, if you want to know that, you've got to go to the sanitation district meeting in Whittier. And by the way, if you wanted to know something this month, they canceled the meeting. So it's, it's, um, I think it's just it's, it's not right. It doesn't create visibility. So I want to start discussing the possibility of changing the ordinance, which defines how our sanitation di district directors are chosen. Maybe this should be more like a... Um, a, a a planning commission appointment uh, rather than, than having our actual elected officials go because if they can't talk about it once they come back, um, what good are they, right? I mean, they complain about, oh, my God, there's these, these unelected bureaucrats on the wa Water Quality Control Board that, that won't talk to us and um, um, they're not accountable to anybody, and then they come back 
and they say, we can't talk to you, but we're doing all we can. Well, if you were doing all you can, you would talk to us. So I think those are some of the, uh, the things that we need to keep pressure on and, and understand what's going on. Thank <laughs> you.